Hi guys, welcome back to my new presentations uh, the topic with the topic of a mass spectrometer. <laughs> so this is my detail. If you have anything, you can call me uh, through the uh, social media or through my emails. So without further ado, let's start with the topic mass spectrometer. <coughs> guys, before I really go into the topic in detail, I would like to introduce a bit on the mass spectrometer. Mass spectrometer is actually a device that is used to identify an unknown mass of a sample or atom. So please keep in mind, it is a device that we use to determine the mass of an atom. Okay, that's why we call it as mass spectrometer. <coughs> why spectro? Spectro here actually stands for the word. The interpretations, the machines will come up with the line spectrum. A line that is what we call as a spectra. So mass spectrometer is a device to determine the mass of an atom. So let's proceed. Basically, uh, we are going to learn the topic with the guys. Okay, mass spectrometer. Those are the subtopic that we are going to determine. The determine the relative atomic mass from the mass spectrums. Spectrum is a graph, line graph that is where we can use it to interpret the data. So <coughs> we are going to interpreting the mass spectra uh, mass. Spectra relative abundance of the isotope where guys in a previous video we, are, uh, we have talked about to determine the mass uh, isotope mass for the atoms but how they get the intensity or the percentage of abundance those value are actually gained or extracted from this instrument which is a mass spectrometer or mass spectra so interpreting the mass spectra molecular fragments so basically we're going to cover about the interpretations of the graph mass spectra for our simple atoms and also a bit complicated um, um, molecules so those are the learning outcome so mass spectrometer as i told you in the first place is actually an instrument which is sample is converted to rapidly moving positive ion by electron bombardment a charged particle are separated according to their masses what i mean by i i, I try to discuss about this topic again guys you will take an atom <laughs> so you will put the atom into a device that device is called as a mass spectrometer so what will you do it you take this atom you will do the bombardment bombardment stand for you are actually um, hit the atom with the electron that is the process that is the process we call the bombardment of electron when you do the bombardment of electron this atom you will force this atom to uh we force to remove its electrons so once you do the bombardment of electrons then you force the electron to move from a neutral atom this will cause the neutral atom is not balanced in total it is not balanced in the total proton and electron number so now you do the bombardment and you are removing the electron therefore it is lack of electron and indirectly this atom will positively charge okay this is the process in a mass spectrometer you do the bombardment and you do the bombardment you force the electron go and the atom become positively charged and when this electron uh, atom is positively charged we call cation we force this atom to move through the line the mass spectrometer in order to detect the mass so this is a very very basic theory of the working principle of the mass spectrometer so slowly we go those are the use of the mass spectrometer it is basically is used to identify the mass of an unknown atom okay or unknown element okay and other than that you actually can determine we can determine the relative abundance 
mean what we mean by a relative abundance how many isotopes do an atom is actually we have in a normal situations in a normal uh, environment so there are and also we can determine the relative molar mass when it is just one atom is relative atomic mass when you have combination of atom then it become relative molecular mass so guys for your information this is a very good platform where you can use the max spectrometer in order to interpret the structure of a complex molecule i will say this is only a method a method to interpret the structure of course when you go along the pathway you will learn a lot of other method um, of interpreting the molecular structure such as uh, NMR instrument nuclear magnetic resonance instruments and we might have a uh, FTIR is another instrument and we have uh, atomic emission spectroscopic is another instrument so what I'm trying to say those are the instrument that we can use a compa combined with the mass spectrometer in order to review the structure of an unknown uh, molecule or molecules yes so basically guys <coughs> those are the work uh, those are the basic uh, uh, diagram of the mass spectrometer as, as you can see there are few sections as you can see over here there are few sections where you can see <coughs> this is where we will put the sample we will put a sample where either in uh, the atoms in the gas state or in a liquid state then we will evaporize it and go through this line when the sample arrive over here do you notice or not we have electron gun the electron gun over here the function of electron gun over here to do the bombardment so it actually will uh, release the electron and do the bombardment to collide will collide with the atom that will pass by over here so there will be a collisions between uh, the uh, between the atom and the electron that been released so we will force the once it's undergo bombardment the atom become positively charged and the positively charged atoms will undergo this plate a negative plate so it will go through this uh, uh, through all the uh, this instrument until it slowly move to the detector <coughs> okay <coughs> this detector is used to detect the any the cat iron and this one will interpret and will come out in the amplifier and finally you will get a result in a recorder i know it'll be confusing let's look in a clearer picture of it the function of it how it works so we uh, remember this instrument it have a, basically have a six most important sections that a student must understand <coughs> we have the vaporizing chamber then we have a ionizing chamber then acceleration chamber vacuum sorry third will fourth will be the deflection chamber and the fifth will be detection and finally the vacuum pump i regard each of these sections carry their own uh, uh, function they have their own function we will go one by one to get what uh, to have a better picture of it from the word itself you should understand vaporizing chamber when you put a sample into the holder <coughs> the sample could be in a liquid form in order the the sample to undergo in these machines the sample must be in a gas state it cannot be in liquid or in the solid state if you have a samples that is in a solid in a liquid sample then you can need to put it into a vaporizing chamber to vaporize it vaporize heat it to the very high temperature in order to make it in a gas form for a sample is already in the gas state, you can skip at this part. You can straight away inject the sample into the system. The, this is a glass tube. It's actually a glass tube. 
then it comes to the electron gun and i told you in a very previous electron gun is a function to do the bombardment to do the collisions with the neutral atom the, the collision will force the electron from the atom will be removed this process is what we call the ionization so remember ionization is a process to remove one um, one electron one mole of electron from any neutral atoms so so fast moving electron knock this is the word knock down knock out the electron of passing atom and make it is a charge when you knock out it become positively charged then move to the third one acceleration yes the electron will be the ion now after the bombardment it will be become an uh, ions and then we need to force the ion to move through this tube until it reached the uh, de uh, detector so you need to accelerate it so how to uh, accelerate it by putting by passing through the negative charge plate so you actually force it to deflect it further and move faster through all the uh, process and of course uh, you have the fourth one deflection deflection is where we put a magnet we will have the electromagnetic field over here why we need to have electromagnetic field over here so supplies a, a variable magnetic field i need to have a various magnetic field in order to deflect the atoms in a different angle because Sometimes I take a very simple example. Let's say I have a chlorine. Chlorine itself have a two isotopes, 35 and 37. Therefore, if both are moving in the same velocity, the same speed, it then it will reach the detector at the same time. This will cause a confuse for the interpretation of the data. So, mag electromagnet is placed over here in order to deflect it, to make it move slower in a different speed in order the isotope, different isotope with a different mass will reach the detected at a different time frame. So, when it reaches at a different time frame, it is easy for us to interpret the data. So that is a function of the magnetic fields. Of course, we have a detection. The moment the atom have reached the reached the uh, not the atom, the particle reached the detector, it will start to be interpreted interpreted on the intensity or the relative abundance. So this will be converted using the amplifier and recorded. And of course, we have the vacuum chamber. The vacuum chamber is used. It, it, the vacuum cham chamber is located over here, even though it's not really significant. Um, have a big functions over here, a significant function. But it is yes, uh, basically it to remove all the air and maintain the high vacuum inside the spectrometer. We need to maintain the vacuum. Vacuum over here stand for there is no other particles vacuum is empty why if there is a, a air particle present uh, presents or in a glass tube this will disturb the movement of the ions through all the through uh, through all the uh, glass tube to be detected over here so we don't want any disturbance so that's why we make it over here as a vacuum there is no uh, frictions between the movements of the ions and also air particles that's the main things over here so this is basically how the mass spectrometer work this is more pictures as i told you we let's take a simple example we have a chlorine we have a two isotope we force all the two isotopes move over here and it undergo ionizations the, uh, the here is the de association it means you break it because we put molecule we break the molecule so it is dissociations break to individual part which is uh, chlorine 35 and 30, uh, 37 and 35 and we have the ion beam acceleration chamber and here is the deflections the most important we we use this to deflect 
the speed of this uh, ions so it can be detected at a different time frame that's the main function of it so basically please keep in mind those are the basic component of the mass spectrometer vaporizing chamber ionizing chamber and also acceleration chamber deflection chamber and detector okay so that's the main thing those are the function vaporizing chamber i have told you to vaporize the non-gas samples solid or liquid into the gas state <coughs> ionization chamber is a high energy electron beam to knock down in the neutral atom to in order to make it a positively charged it is ionized chamber is actually a heated metal coil heated metal coil why when you hit a metal it will release a plenty of electrons this is what at a high speed electron this is what we call as electron gun and bombardment happens so <coughs> This will be what is actually happen in the ionization, in the bombardment. When you have a neutral atom, not by, you remove, you remove the electron, not by the electron, and it is a positively charged. So, the electron, this electron is from the electron gun, and you knock one electron, you kick an electron out from here, you kick out an electron from here. So, you will notice total you have two electron at the end of the reactions. So, that is how this sodium become positively charged. And of course, we have acceleration chamber. I have told you in the very beginning to force the positive ion to attract attracted to the negative plate. You force the positive ion to mobile move through all the uh, and uh, through all the this one gas uh, glass tube. The electrical field accelerate the positive ion to higher and a constant speed in order to be detected in the detector so the reflection chamber you must remember deflection chamber is combination of the L magnet in order to deflect the different isotope in a different uh, angle in order it to, be, it to be detected at a different time frame in a detector okay so it, it have a different strength of electromagnetic uh, fields in deflection chamber and of course i'm talking about it have a different strength of electromagnetic field have a positive ions it deflected and it this will be transfer into a detected this will flow the current which is amplified and recorded as the peak this is what we call as a spectrum spectra and this cause the resulting is called as a mass spectrometer and this mass spectrometer is respond to the relative abundance, the relative abundance of the materials. So, of course, vacuum pump to remove the any gas molecules from the system in order to reduce the collisions between the air particle and the positively charged ions. So, guys, on the, my next a video i will discuss how to interpret the mono atom sample the atom and molecule sample so stay tuned with my youtube inshallah i will update thank you guys